I'm gonna put him on the phone and let you talk to him, okay? Hello? Is that Frank? Yes. Hiya, Frank. This is Jimmy Hoffa. <laughs> Glad to meet you. Glad to meet you, too, even if it's over the phone. Our friend speaks very highly of you. Thank you. Only three people in the world have one of these. And only one of them is Irish. I heard you paint houses. Hi, I'm Jeff. My friends call me Hefe. Who this? This is Real Talk, though. This is the second episode. Uh, for this episode, we're going to be talking about The Irishman, starring Robert De Niro, Joe Pesci, and the legendary Al Pacino. Now, this is directed by Martin Scorsese. It's probably going to be the biggest film of the year, I think. Oh, yeah. Uh, it's, it's premiering on Netflix. And we, since we got the chance to see it before it premiered on Netflix, we decided to talk about it. All right, so before we start, who this has going? It's going good. Real good after seeing this thing. Yeah. What are, what are your initial thoughts? I mean, this film has, it hasn't been seen by the general public yet, but it's probably going to be... It's, it's the first time that all of these actors are in one film together. You've had Pesci and De Niro together. You have De Niro and Pacino together. But this is De Niro, Harvey Keitel as well, Pesci, all of them, all in one film. I mean, it's crazy to think that something this big and epic, all of them together under the umbrella of Scorsese, yeah. of all people, isn't really being done justice by being widespread in theaters as it would be and as it should be, and then eventually ending up on Netflix. Yeah. But I guess... You know, to make light of a bad situation in that case, they, funny enough, brought it to theaters. Limited run, of course, before it goes to Netflix, and in the month of November. It paid off because we got to see it, and it's so worthwhile. Yeah, three and a half hours. Three and a half. It's probably, I think, that's the same length as, as, the, as the Godfather. Yeah. And it was worth it. Absolutely worth it. Frank, I want you to meet my cousin, Russell Buffalino. Better watch, there's a lot of tough guys around here. Did he tell you? I'm not afraid of tough guys, are you? I didn't think so. What are your initial thoughts? I mean, I'm just glad, first off and foremost, we got to see, well, separately, of course, we got to see Joker, just to bring that into the mix a little bit, as far as the only clear-cut, neck-and-neck competitor with the Irishman would be. I reference that because De Niro's performance versus both of them put together, Joker was phoned in, but the Irishman, I think because he co-directed or produced this whole thing, yeah. was actually welcomed <clears throat> once after a long while just being like in nothing special. There's, there's a lot of redemption in that film for all of the actors. Uh, De Niro for the Joker, Pesci, because we haven't seen him on screen in, in such a role. You know, I think this is the first time he's been in a mob film where he, he wasn't the hothead. Yeah, yeah. And Pacino, I mean, for so long, people have always questioned Pacino's uh, chops as an actor, you know, like he's always taking roles that weren't so, so popular. Um, but I think with this film, there's a lot of redemption for, for all three actors. I think Pacino did a phenomenal job as, as Jimmy Hoffa. Yeah, absolutely. Um, it took a while to, to adjust to, to, to the character because I've only read about Hoffa in books and, and you know, just read some stories. But seeing the way Pacino brought the character to life, it was oh, very yeah. fascinating. A friend of ours is having a little trouble. A friend at the top. Back then, there was nobody in this country who didn't know who Jimmy Hoffa was. You got a gun! Get the gun out of his hand! You always charge a guy with a gun. With a knife, you run away. So you charge with a gun, with a knife, you run. So he, he was in with the mob, but mm -hmm. then he kind of he kind of had a, had a falling out. Yeah. With the, uh, but in, in his falling out, um, he, he, he never backed down. No. Okay. Surprisingly enough. Yeah, he didn't back down. So it shows you how, how powerful Hoffa was in, in his time. Okay, and Pacino really did a great job in bringing, bringing that character to life. Uh, De Niro plays the role of Frank the Irishman, which the film is, is centered around. You know, it, it's, I don't know about you, but this is my introduction to, to, to Frank Sheridan. I didn't know too much, too much about him as, as a model. Same with me, yeah. yeah. You know, uh, but it's, it's the film is based off of a book uh, titled I Heard, I Heard You Paint Houses. And De Niro fell in love with, with, the, with the book and wanted to, to make the movie. Um, but he does a very good job as Frank the Irishman. We see him, he's, he's like, he's a 
really good mobster. He gets the job done. He's uh, very humble as a mobster compared to to the likes of a of a of a Gotti, of a crazy Joe Gallo, who, who's also uh, portrayed in the film by by uh, Sebastian. I forget his full name, the comedian. But yeah, he does, he does a great he does a great job as a uh, Frank the Irishman. You know, he's he's one of those characters. You know, back in the day. Mobsters, you had to be 100% Italian to be a made man. Mm-hmm. He was Irish, but he was, he was in. You know, right. he, had, he had a really strong role in, in the mob. You know. But you know what's crazy now? You bring that up because, again, this is just like you. This is my introduction officially to uh, Frank, his character, is that since he wasn't of pure blood, as a reference to him being, yeah. he was the odd man out, the Irishman, of course, dubbed. It's crazy to think how ruthless, how cold, how just like quick to like act upon whatever they told him to do he was, I guess because knowing he could never be inofficially like any of them were yeah. or made like them, he had to really show out and really go above and beyond with just like killing on the spots, yeah. not really thinking things through or, sorry, let me take that back, meaning he knew the ins and outs already how to kill or what to use, he wouldn't have to think twice about it or yeah. really plot it out like that. He just acted upon like instinct, like nothing. He got the job done. Yes, I do, sir. Where are you going? I'm going to work. Like uh, Pesci's character, uh, Russ was a man of, he had a lot of power. So it was really, I mean, you see throughout the film that De Niro is constantly trying to impress him. You know, he, he never, he pretty, never says no to Pesci, mm-hmm. you know. And in this film, like I said earlier, this, it's one of the, it's the first film that I've seen Pesci in the role of a boss and not such a, a hothead. Right. I think that was interesting what, what Scorsese did in, in putting those roles like that, you know, in, in, in giving them those roles in that film. Right, because usually you expect the Nero to be the calmer of the two when put yeah. together. Yeah. And Pesci just gravitating towards being the hothead. Yeah, I, I, I would have thought Pesci would have been hot. Yeah. You know? <laughs> but uh, he was he was the, the quiet guy. Pacino was the hothead, and De Niro was like want to balance everything out. Now that I look back on it, though, don't you think that might have been more of a physical handicap because they weren't like switched around the roles? Because Pesci would have been a natural for the Irishman, but he's so goddamn short, though. That's true. And De Niro isn't huge, but pause, but. He's got the build, and I guess camera angles and such permitting, they can make him out to be like as the Irishman was intended to be. Yeah. How, how'd you feel about the de aging and the aging, though? I liked it. It was like convincing enough. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I spent a lot of time focusing on, on De Niro's eyes. It was just like, yeah. he need what they what they what they did uh, with, with his eyes in that film uh, with. With Pacino, I mean, his voice stands out so much. Like, like I said, it took a while for me to adjust to him in that role as Hoffa. Um, I, I, I think what he, his hairstyle was what people may have expected for him to, to have in The Godfather Part Three. Yeah. You know, it was like slick back, um, you know, appearance while he, he had a guy. Yeah, I think the aging worked. I mean, I think it was, everything was on point. Because I kept reading things about that, oh, it wasn't convincing, or it was like kind of mismatch. I mean, at least maybe on the screen we saw it on, it looked convincing enough. What, the de-aging? Yeah. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't see anything wrong with it. I, I saw it as, as fine. I, you know, it's, I think it's the first time that I've seen that technology used. I think it's the first time they used it. Yeah, I so I, I don't, I, there's nothing I can really compare it to to say that, well, this is done better or uh, it was bad compared to this. From seeing it from the first time, I don't see anything wrong. I, I mean, the acting was so good that you can you can see, the, you can understand the story and you can see what's happening in their lives without being, being lost. The only thing that bothered me about physical appearance, otherwise a stellar and probably the stealer of all the scenes he was in, Pacino, was the fat suit they gave him. Mm. It was kind of like out of place. It was like, it reminded me of Scarface when they had the one performer in the mask at the nightclub. Yeah. In like the overly fat suit. Yes. Like it was just like all pudgy, like misshaped, disproportioned, like, and his pants were like so hyped up, mm-hmm. showing his socks all the time. And I think yeah. it was mismatched in one part. 
it, it just that only threw me off a little bit. Yeah. Because it was like he's fat, but he's not, his face isn't fat. Yeah. De Niro didn't phone it in this time, thank God. I think because he was more heavily involved and loved the project so much. Yeah. But you know how you're used to seeing like the De Niro, hey, hey, what, whoa, whoa, whatever. Yeah. He kind of phones it in for the gangster parts. But this time he actually did the slight little inflation of an Irishman, how he would sound versus a, like an Italian guy. It was like the army. You followed orders. You did the right thing. You got rewarded. De Niro was initially set to, to direct it, but because of so many other projects that came in the way, and a lot of things happened. But I think why De Niro shined in this film is, that, well, he wanted to do the film, he liked the script, so he put his all into it. Yeah. You know? I think that, that helps when, when you're in love with the project and you want to bring it, bring it to, to the screen. You know? I also like the relationship they paint now, this might be according to his telling of the story. Who knows is it really valid, fully or not. Yeah. But I like the compromise he had of, let's say, he's fresh off a kill. from Just putting two in a guy's head, walking down the street and thinking nothing of it. Yeah. But he comes back home, he changes out his clothes. He might sit down a little bit and think about what he did. Have some sort of remorse. Yeah. Even though he's supposed to be this ice cold guy with no remorse whatsoever. Yeah. And then how they focused on, even though she had like one or two lines throughout the whole thing, Anna Paquin's part. Yes. As the one daughter who kept, who kind of had that like sunken feeling about he's got something else going on. Yeah. It reminds me much of uh, when, when uh, Johnny Depp played George Jung in, in Blow. That relationship between father and daughter and how you're living, he's like living his double life. He wants to be this good father, but he's so in it into the mob and he's, this daughter sees uh, how he's living and is it's like noticing it and tries to, to make the, the daughter happy, but he really can't, you know. But what's interesting in that film is that how she gravitated. She gravitates towards Hoffa. Yeah. It shows you how, how you know how charismatic this man is. He's able to to break this 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 uh, girl's cold uh, demeanor mm -hmm. and build this, this this friendship, as opposed to Pesci's character who couldn't do it. Right. You know, even 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 uh, De Niro's character couldn't really connect with his daughter, but Hoffa was able to. I thought that was that was uh, very interesting. I know I wasn't a good dad. I know that. I know that. I was just trying to, to protect all you. From what? You didn't see what I see, what I've been through. So much of. I mean, it's not unsung praises for, but, you know, the Sopranos, Tony Soprano. Yes. He always had that going on, too. Mm -hmm. Trying to, like, live double life of, you know, my boss, head of the family, yeah. you know, literally, of course. And, you know, the, the spoils of the riches that come with being a mob boss, but trying to remember, oh, yeah, I have a wife at home. So yeah. maybe I shouldn't cheat that much. Yes. And, like, being on medications, cheating with his therapist and all that. Yeah. Like this whole the mean this whole facade you're introduced to, unfortunately sometimes for many of his victims. But then behind all that is like just a whole complex intricate puzzle of a man. Yeah, trying to hide it all. Yeah, uh, uh, it, seeing that and, and seeing how these people are able to bring those those things that happen internally onto the screen is it's very very good, very interesting. Now, the Joker. Uh, film directed by Todd Phillips. This film directed by Oscar says award season is, is, will be coming up soon. Yeah. Two different generations. You know. How do you think it holds up? Like who will take top billing, I guess? Or? Yeah. Does, does, does the Irishman, does it get credit uh, Oscar season? I think it has to. It's that good a flick. This is something really well put together and only brought more to the center stage courtesy of such an excellent cast. Yeah. Does, does, does De Niro or Pesci, or, are they in the running for best actor, what do you think? I mean, I'm biased with Pacino, he's my favorite of all time, yeah. but he really did steal the show during this whole thing. It, it was just like made for him to come back and like have his little swan song too, so I think he'll, he'll probably get a nod. Yeah. Yeah, I, I think just Pacino was just. I mean, I'm just, I'm just like you. I'm, I'm always excited to see uh, Pacino on screen, but I think he just did some good things in that, in that role. Like, 
he he showed you how to to be fearless even in moments of weakness. You know, like capitalism back now. Mm-hmm. And even with Pacino being at his age, so far removed from from mob mob film, from Carlitos away, from the golf, from Scarf, from being so far removed from years and years from those films, he still holds his own. You know, mm-hmm. he's still able to to, to command uh, for us. And I think that that Oscar when it's Oscar time, yeah, that that matters. But here's the thing that throws me off a little bit too, because the Irishman got lucky that it's a strong story, it's well put together. Yeah. You got someone who really feels something for that kind of project, spearing it, and he just happened to tag on Scorsese of all people to help him out with it. Yeah. So you got that. Plus, you got a killer cast. Everybody's a top-notch, like, A-list player. Yeah. Versus the Joker, which everybody that played under or to the grace of Joaquin yeah. was good. But this sh- the whole focus of and the show stealer throughout I, I think there's no part of Joker that he's not in yeah. is Joker, yeah. is Joaquin. So how do you compare those, like a stellar cast versus just one standout role? It's, you can't really compare it. It's like, it's like old generation, new generation. You know? It, with, with the Irishman, you have these legendary actors, you know, that, that are from an era before the whole Me Too, before all of this, you know, being politically correct. It was just like, you know, it's a man movie, as opposed to when you see the Joker, it's like it caters to, to this generation, things that are happening at, at this time, you know. And different messages, different <laughs> things implied, I think. Yeah. They're not too far apart, but they're like still in their own lanes, yeah. per se. Yeah. But then I was reading the other day now, too, since, funny enough, Joker's been out in theaters now on a road to a billion plus first R-rated movie to do that, versus The Irishman, which just came out now in theaters, limited release, but... About to jump on Netflix real quick. Uh, De Niro, no, sorry, Scorsese was supposed to do his version of Joker for the longest time now. Yes. But it seems like, and this is according to what I read, so forgive me if I misquote, but he couldn't do it or couldn't see how he could pull off his version and make it come to light to make sense. Yeah. But that leads into now the controversy he had with what he said about Marvel superhero films like considering not to them them considering them not to be cinema or pure of there's like there's something to it and what he's saying is it's two different styles of film but someone like Scorsese who, who's made his his who's built his legacy on making uh, gangster flicks you're really in opposition to, to superhero movies you know, and I, that, that's one of the things I've always pointed out in The Dark Knight is I never saw, I never could believe the joke about the mob. But that's because I, I'm, a, I'm a, like, before superhero movies, I like mob movies. Mm-hmm. It's two different, two different genres. You know, you have one uh, genre where you root for the bad guy to win, and you have this other uh, type of film where it's, you know, you, it's literally good over evil. Mm-hmm. I don't think Scorsese would, could really do such a film like that based off of his style. I don't think the, the guy who did the party with, with DiCaprio can actually have DiCaprio in the role as Joker. I don't see uh, DiCaprio pulling off that role. Oh yeah, and that was the thing too, right? Yeah. That it was implied that getting Scorsese to do that version of Joker would have implied that DiCaprio would have jumped on to do the role. Yeah, I don't see DiCaprio being able to, to, to pull off that role going into to that, uh, way, that, that darkness. I just don't, you know, it's two different, two different lives, two different styles, two different philosophies. Yeah, I just, I just don't see it. But yeah. Overall, how do you think this film compares to other mob movies, other Scorsese films, like The Departed, Goodfellas, Casino? How does it compare to some of Pacino's previous works? Oh, know? man. Uh, that's tough, just based off the star power and actually getting all three of them together again, underneath the umbrella of Scorsese, which is crazy. I want to put this in my top five, guaranteed. I mean, I, I still go with probably Godfather 2 is my number one. Again, I'm a sucker for Pacino, so I'll put probably Scarface in there and then 
this might round it out, but I don't know. It, it, that's tough to say. Yeah. It's really good. Yeah, it's good. I think I think it's one of those things I, ha I have to see a bit more. Uh, with, with the Godfather, I've seen it so many times. Like I can literally recite the lines. Uh, Casino is just I've seen I've seen those movies so many times that it's hard to say where I would place uh, this film or place The Irishman compared to those other films. I think it's one of those films that, that, that I would have to, to, to watch again. Mm. But seeing it for the first time, yeah, it's a very good film. Really, good. is it up there in the classics? I would have to see it a bit more. I would have to watch it some more to see because I'm pretty sure there's some parts that I missed. There's some lines, you know, there's some quotables, you know, that that I haven't even even adapted, you know, because I always adapt uh, mob films to, to my life. There's nothing I haven't added yet, you know. One one standout scene is I think it, it was part of the trailer is when uh, Pacino is is meeting with uh, I believe it's Stephen Graham's character. Uh, I forget yeah. his name in the film, and he's late to the meeting. Right, right, right. And he's like, you're wearing shorts. Uh, and he's like, well, you know, he breaks it down. Like, when you, when you come to a meeting, you're on time, and you have to be in a suit. And I think that was something that's very, you know, that, that was one of the standout scenes. But I would have to see it. I would have to watch it some more to see if, it, if, it, if it's up there with those films. You know? I'm ready to put it up there. It's, it's pretty... It's pretty fucking good yeah. overall. Like, it's you would think, or going into it, three and a half hours would be like way too much to have yeah. it all be that good or like stand the test of time. Yeah. But you don't feel the three and a half hours. It's like it's got highs and lows, but just it's everything's just done just right. Yeah. Oh well, one thing, one little takeaway, which might knock it down some points, was remember the part the first one of the first two kills De Niro does yeah not kills I'm sorry the, the part where he beats up the guy in the store yeah <laughs> the James King yeah that, that's the one part you'll see if you see it but it, he beats up a guy and at De Niro's age it's implied he's younger his young daughter watching him for the first time be a savage yeah that's where she gets the hint of him, him being a guy that he's not really cut out to be yeah but the way that he beats up the guy is it's like old man strength. Yeah. But he's not even hitting him, I think, at one point, and he's struggling to get his arm up just to swing at him. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, it reminded me of uh, James Kim when he beat up Carlo in, in The Godfather, and he was like missing his <laughs> punches. Yeah. I mean, yeah. But some really good parts. I, uh, there's that whole Catholic theme in there, so I, I love that. Oh, the fact of you. Yeah. So. Yeah, I definitely want to see see it some more to see where I, I would rank it, you know. Well, I, great, great things are going to be on Netflix. We'll just watch as much as you want. Yeah, so yeah, that's true. That's true. I can watch it nonstop. You can watch it nonstop, yeah. Okay. Any final thoughts? Really good overall. Pacino steals the show. Pesci is an unsung hero, like you said, because he's yeah. so subtle, cool, calm, and kept throughout the whole thing. And it's a pleasant turnaround to see him do that for once instead of being the best, loud get best, best actor. I don't know about that. He, it, I mean, who is the star though? Is it De Niro? De Niro's the star. Ah man, he was good, but I say best co-starring or whatever. Supporting cast. Supporting, supporting role, cast. Yeah. I think it's got to be Pacino and Pesci. I'm gonna edge it out saying Pacino. Okay. Pesci's really good though. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's tough. It's really tough. Yeah, I definitely want to see some more. I, I want I want to see Pesci win because I think this is the first time that Pesci is like, you know, the head guy in the mob film. So I want to see him get get you know get recognized for that. Uh, but yeah, Pacino did a phenomenal job. And yeah, it's it's tough. You know, it's tough. Yeah, it's it, it just reminds me so like. I mean, Scorsese did that this as well with, with The Departed. There's like so many, so many good parts, so many good actors in one film. Like it, it's just hard to pick a <laughs> standout, you know. But yeah, classic. Yeah, it's a very good film. Hard to say. Yeah. You're watching Real Talk. I'm Jeff. My friends call me Hefe. Who this? I'll see you next time.